At the time of this video's writing, the SCP Foundation currently contains well over 6,000 items. This organization really gets around, from making deals with deities to containing horrors capable of ending the world in a heartbeat. So it's hard to think of this secret group ever having humble beginnings. But everyone and everything has to start somewhere, right? And would you believe that one of the most powerful groups in the world all started with a little sheaf of papers? Of course, that's if this particular iteration of SCP-001 is to be believed. That's right, we once again return to SCP-001, the gift that keeps on taking. It is a heavily contested spot, currently held by over 30 different contradictory anomalies and counting. Their natures vary from things that started the Foundation to things more than capable of ending it along with the rest of the world and everything in between. The Scarlet King, the Gate Guardian, and the ever-eccentric Dr. Wondertainment all exist under this banner. But today we want to talk about a little stack of paper bound by a single staple in the top left corner. Who would have guessed that something this simple would not only be pivotal in the creation of the SCP Foundation as we know it today, but could also be one of the most dangerous items ever discovered? We realize this is a lot to take in. Keeping with the SCP-001 spirit, let's take it all the way back to the beginning, to the fine oak desk of the late... Um... <clears throat> oh! <laughs> we don't have a name! Shame. <laughs> let's just call him the First Administrator. He's the head honcho of the precursor to the Foundation as we know it today. A rinky-dink little organization with the thankless task of keeping the paranormal under wraps. We're talking a long, long time ago here. No lanky freaks who kill everybody who sees their face, no gloopy sadists who can walk through walls, no giant unkillable reptiles with major anger issues. This organization, let's call them the Precursors, was dealing with the real small fries. Paranoiacs reporting ghost sightings in their garden sheds, old ladies finding the face of Jesus in a piece of toast, abnormally large and strangely shaped potato chips. Okay, maybe not that small time, but you get the idea. Truly exceptional anomalies were few and far between, until the sheaf of papers landed on the dearly deceased administrator's desk. He didn't even know how exactly the papers got there, but given the number of mostly junk files that passed his desk every day, he wasn't in the business of questioning. The words, Confidential Report on Special Items Classified, were printed on the front. This made it more interesting than 90% of the files he read on a daily basis already, so he turned the first page and began to read. It was much stranger than the usual paranormal reports that the Precursor Foundation processed. No late-night wailing or rattling chains. Instead, it was a surprisingly sterile report about a bizarre and frightening anomaly. A large, fleshy, tumor-like object fixed to a set of metal stairs. Inside the object is a seemingly normal living room, but on closer inspection, all the furniture is made out of living human tissue and flesh. Anyone who steps inside is transformed into more nightmarish living furniture. The administrator gave a nervous chuckle. It was disturbing, sure, but Stephen King wrote about disturbing things all the time. And that didn't mean that the Foundation needed to be on the lookout for an evil clown. Well, until SCP-993, the sinister Bobble the Clown would enter the Foundation's radar a few years later. That's a video for another time. The administrator put the file into his incredibly disorganized filing cabinet and prepared to go home and drink bourbon until he fell asleep. That's exactly when his office phone began to ring. When the administrator picked up the phone, he heard the excited voice of one of his field agents telling him they'd just scored the find of the century, a giant sphere made from living flesh with a room inside. Finally, an honest-to-God terrifying paranormal anomaly. He could hardly believe what he was hearing. He needed to grab and reread the file just to make sure he wasn't going insane. Where exactly did he put it? He scrambled through the filing cabinet, tossing aside the files on shed ghosts and burnt toast Jesuses until he found the file marked Confidential Report on Special Items Classified. However, when he opened the file, there was nothing about the giant fleshy room in there. It must have been a completely different file that he'd somehow missed before because this one was about something known as the Biological Motherboard. The document detailed pretty much exactly what the name suggested, 
a large and incredibly complex motherboard made out of biological material like keratin and chitin. While the motherboard would remain inactive if kept warm, if its environment ever fell below 35 degrees, it would begin to expand, integrating nearby material into its mass and attempting to copy the structure of any biological matter it comes into contact with. An interesting and frightening prospect, but not what he was looking for. He threw this new file down onto his desk and continued to work through his chaotic filing cabinet like a madman, searching for the file on that frightening fleshy room that his subordinates had seemingly actually discovered. But not long after that, he received another phone call from a completely different field agent. This time, the agent was giddily telling the administrator about a new discovery a huge computer motherboard seemingly made out of entirely organic material. The administrator was floored. He hung up the phone and slowly turned back to the file now laying on his desk. Those words on the cover, confidential report on special items classified, seemed almost mocking now. Had all these incredible supernatural anomalies been reported before and just lost in his awful filing cabinet? Was he one of the most incompetent team leaders who'd ever walked the earth? Just what exactly was going on here? He sat back down at his desk, now fantasizing about the tumbler of bourbon more than ever, and opened the file again, hoping to read up a little more on the impossible motherboard that his personnel had just discovered. But there was nothing about the biological motherboard on these pages. Instead, it described a large door inside a factory, and the 12 rusty keys capable of opening it. Each of these keys would open the doorway, but the key used would affect the reality waiting for them on the other side. Only the seventh and twelfth keys were safe. Opening the door with any of the others would lead to a horrible death for anyone brave or foolish enough to walk through. Several days later, an anomaly matching that exact description was discovered and contained by the Foundation. All of this had been an unprecedented escalation of anomalous stakes. Suddenly, two crucial facts clicked into place for the administrator. Firstly, this file was an anomalous supernatural artifact of its own. Secondly, the reason it was never the same thing was that this strange sheaf of papers had a very specific purpose. To act as a kind of oracle, an advanced warning system of the next anomaly that would appear and fall into their grasp, giving them all the knowledge and tools they needed to safely lock these things away. The whole thing had been timed perfectly. What a miracle that this immensely useful item would appear in his office just as the anomalies would start to come in thick and fast. It would facilitate their mission in the coming struggles to secure, contain, and protect the world's anomalies. Hmm, there's a certain ring to that, isn't there? They were finding enough anomalies to start classifying them numerically, starting with the sheaf of papers themselves as SCP-001. With another turn of the page, the administrator discovered a file on a magical key that can open any lock. Not long after, that exact key was discovered and brought in before being designated SCP-005. Little by little, as more real anomalies came in, the organization was able to expand and bring in more personnel, as well as bring in more sources of funding and opening new sites. The rate this organization was expanding, they couldn't even leave management up to one person anymore. They needed to form a whole council to take over management. An O5 council, if you will. And it just so happened that just after that, the sheaf of papers revealed a mythical spring that could provide eternal health and vitality for anyone who drinks from it. What a perfect way to keep your management safe in a job dealing with dangerous supernatural entities. And things only got stranger and more fascinating from there. After that came a man with a miniature version of the planet Earth inside his abdomen, soon known as SCP-007. Next came a horrifying virus that kills and reanimates its victims into flesh-eating zombies, only capable of being destroyed with sufficient trauma to the head, dubbed SCP-008 after containment. Another turn of the page, and not long after, a frightening red ice was discovered in Alaska. This mysterious substance breaks the laws of physics, and also has the potential to break all life on Earth. It can infect water supplies, and when a hapless life form happens to drink this water, their organs crystallize from the inside. This became SCP-009. Another turn of the page, and this new SCP Foundation found a collection of six metal collars created for human-sized necks. When these collars are placed around the necks of a victim, 
The person holding a corresponding controller has utter domination over their every action. It carried on like that. Hundreds of anomalies and then thousands. Years passed. The staff changed. The old guard stepped down or died. Every time the sheaf of papers were opened, new astonishing premonitions of anomalies soon to be discovered slipped through. There were plague doctors who could kill with a touch, a giant angel with bladed wings, a sea snail that believed he was an English lord, a sculpture that would kill anyone that dared to stop looking at it, a nightmarish fusion of a giant bovine heart and a scorpion capable of setting things on fire with its venom. Whatever would the SCP Foundation have done without the advanced warning system provided by the sheaf of papers? Whatever it predicted would inevitably be the next thing Foundation field agents would find. It seems like one of the few unambiguously good SCP-001 entries out there, right? Well, not quite. If we have any scientists in the audience, they've no doubt been gritting their teeth and pulling their hair out in frustration. Allow us to introduce you to a little phrase that the latest iteration of the O5 Council is very interested in when it comes to the sheaf of papers. Direction of causality. This whole time, we and the earlier Foundation administrators believed that the emergence of the new anomalies led to changes in SCP-001. But this current administration has quite the opposite question. What if the changes in SCP-001 were actually causing the emergence of new anomalies? What if every time the prior administration opened up the sheaf of papers to take a look at the next anomaly, before giving themselves a pat on the back for being so well prepared, they were actually unleashing that very anomaly. Could it be that what had seemed like the most helpful item of the bunch was actually the most dangerous of them all? Releasing new anomaly after new anomaly, blighting the world with countless horrors. That probably leaves you with one question. So which is correct? Is it a method of seeing the future or manipulating it? And our answer is a strong... <sighs> We don't know. But frankly, the current leadership of the SCP Foundation sees no merit in taking that risk. That's why the sheaf of papers has been given the Keter class designation and is kept under extensive and severe containment methods, forbidding any future research into the true nature of its anomalous abilities. Seems a little severe, sure, but better safe than sorry, right? Now go check out SCP-001, which is the real 001, and SCP-001 Ouroboros Cycle, the full story compilation for more of the fascinating and endless mystery of SCP-001.